welcome back. So, in the previous lecture we just saw that uh, a, that an interesting result about the Witzenhausen problem which is that if the first controller here f we had reformulated the Witzenhausen problem you can see the previous lecture to see this reformulation. Uh, the, 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 the previous controller f here is, is linear then it turns out that the, 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 uh, the controller at the second time step is also linear. Okay. So, if, if your first controller is chosen to be linear then the optimal uh, controller at the second stage is also linear. Right. As I mentioned at the end of the previous lecture this does not mean that f has is itself uh, the, uh, the optimal choice for f is linear that is not being claimed here. We are just proposing that suppose f is linear then and asking what is the optimal g and it turns out that the optimal g is also a linear function. Now let us see uh, the so, so what this suggests is uh, that the, 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 the best response Uh, the best response g to a linear f is also linear right so this is this is the this is what this suggests okay this is what it says now let us see if the reverse is true so suppose instead of uh, instead of proposing that f is linear suppose i uh, i i posit that suppose I fix g to be linear, suppose g is linear right. So, so if uh, so that means if I suppose g is linear what do I mean by this I suppose g is linear means suppose I am taking g to be equal to some mu times t and now let us ask we are not saying anything about f, f could be anything and we want to ask what is the optimal f in response to g okay. So, what is the optimal f? optimal f in response in response to g. Well, let us write out our j of f comma g again. So, this here remember is expectation of k square times x minus f x the whole square plus f x minus now g is taken as mu times t. So, it will be simply mu times whatever is the information with g which is f x plus v mu times f x plus v the whole squared. Now, if you look at this now let us look at this expression more closely. So, there is here a um, uh, in this expression we have a quadratic term in in f here right we have a quadratic term in f. Uh, so, this is some perfect square in f x minus f x this here is can be rewritten as some kind of uh, as something like a uh, perfect square in f x minus something. So, for example, you could uh, I could just rewrite this term as f x minus mu times f minus mu times v because mu is lean, uh, the mu is just being multiplied outside g is linear. So, this effectively is is mu uh, mu minus sorry 1 minus mu 1 minus mu times f x minus mu times v the whole squared right. So, this is that is that is basically this term. So, if I so what we have here is a perfect square plus another term that looks like that is almost a perfect square basic uh, for all you know uh, practically a perfect square. Right. So, consequently what we can do is we can complete the squares here and eventually write out something of the following form. So, we can write this cost in the following form where we write we have some constant say k dash outside then we have something like a x plus b v minus f x the whole square and plus there are additional terms uh, the there are additional terms here which would uh, which uh, which would not depend uh, which would depend on uh, x and v but not on f. So, this is what we would get when we complete the squares ok. So, this is by completing the squares ok. 
right. So, this is uh, our usual technique of completing the squares which you learnt in uh, you know in high school and so on ok. So, that is what we get here. Now, so, so and remember this dotted part here when we complete the squares is does not depend on x, the, uh, sorry does not depend on f, not depend on f. So, now when we minimize this over f we are effectively just minimizing this part, minimizing this minimizing this over f. Now, now this is where we uh, this now this is uh, where things get interesting. So, once again remember x and v these were Gaussians, x and v were independent Gaussians the x here. Uh, uh, so, f here is chosen as a function of Gaussian and what we want to estimate is some function like this a x plus a x plus b v give uh, from the information of a that is present in x right. So, what we have here is basically an, a, an estimation of one Gaussian from another Gaussian and where the two are both jointly Gaussian right. So, so as a consequence of this, this mean square this is also a mean square estimation problem and this problem also has conditional expectation as its solution and because the underlying variables are Gaussian the optimal as conditional expectation is actually linear in the information. So, therefore, this f x here then is essentially the conditional expectation of a x plus b v uh, plus b v given x and this is linear. linear in x. So, this is some form this is of the form lambda times x. So, what what this is uh, what this is telling us is that the best response uh, best response f to a linear g is also linear right. So, let me write this down. So, we have that the best response to a linear f is the best response g to a linear f is is linear. The best response similarly then the best response f to a linear g the best response f to a linear g is linear. right. So, what does this mean this now the, this is uh, tempting to think that essentially from here it is tempting to think that f and g therefore, have to be linear because after all if I choose f to be linear the optimal g to be is linear if I choose g to be linear the optimal f is linear therefore, it seems like linear comma linear the pair of f and g being linear is the optimal is the optimal choice. But this is not actually the case. Uh, it turns uh, there are many problems in which the the uh, in which the there are two variables and the optimal choice for one given the other is of a certain form and the given the optimal choice of the other given the first is also of a certain form. But put that pair together that is not necessarily the optimal choice globally when we are looking at uh, when we look at all possible pairs, right? So, this only this this particular uh, this particular thing uh, phenomenon uh, where where linear is uh, linear is optimal in response to linear is what we, we say that this 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 sort of pair is what is called person by person optimal there is a term used in this I will explain this a little more in detail later this is called person by person optimal. that is not the same in general not the same as global optimal. Global optimal or or what is also called global or what is also called team optimal. It is not the optimal one for 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 uh, amongst all possible pairs all right. So, in fact, this is the uh, this is uh, showing that uh, this is not the case is also one of the results of Wittsenhausen that he, he find he shows that you can 
uh, uh, that this is in fact uh, the uh, the uh, uh, that the person by person optimal uh, is different from the team optimal. Now, so so now let us go back and see how exactly is uh, is the uh, uh, how uh, I will uh, let us actually review how exactly did Witzenhausen show that uh, person by person of this particular uh, linear pair is not actually optimal. So, what one can do is the following to begin with we can we can, we have so far only shown that if I choose uh, f or g to be linear the optimal choice for the other one is also linear right. So, in that case now uh, that does not yet tell us what the optimal pair of linear controllers itself is because linear this is just saying that if one is linear the opt the other op the other one has the optimal choice for the other one is linear. Now, what one can do in this kind of a case is do what is called a mountain climbing procedure. You fix one to be linear find the optimal uh, in response to that. Then in response to that one fixing that one to be linear find the uh, find this optimal one. And then in response to this you find this the other optimal one and so on and so forth and you can keep doing this. Now, uh, so what Witzenhausen actually does in his paper is he finds firstly he finds an expression for the optimal cost that you can get under linear controllers right. So, he considers so suppose so he says suppose so if f and g are linear what is the optimal cost we can get what is the optimal cost under linear controllers. So, this here then j of f comma g if f and g are linear what we can do is we can write f as f x equal to uh, equal to lambda times x and g uh, g of x uh, equal to mu times x then j of f comma g can be written as a function j basically as a function of lambda and mu. So, it is a function j of lambda comma mu and remember lambda and mu uh, the uh, we can actually compute the optimal mu. Uh, very easily as a function of lambda. So, fixing the lambda we can compute what the optimal mu is. Uh, so, for this let us let us uh, let us write out some let us fix some more form to the problem. So, let us assume here that x is Gaussian with variance sigma squared and v is is Gaussian with variance 1. Right. So, in this case the optimal mu uh, the optimal mu is uh, mu is given by sigma square lambda square divided by 1 plus sigma square lambda square all right so this is what we find is the optimal mu so this is is mu of of uh, mu of lambda so we can plug this in and uh, uh, we can plug this in into uh, in into our expression for j. So, we can write then j of lambda comma mu of lambda this then becomes a function of lambda which we can then optimize and find the optimal lambda find the optimal lambda by uh, taking the derivative with respect to lambda of putting the de partial derivative with respect to lambda as 0 ok all right ok. So, there are uh, this itself turns out to be a fairly uh, fairly complicated uh, fairly complicated calculation it uh, it turns out that uh, the the uh, uh, the the there are there are this this kind of a uh, once you put the derivative equal to 0 it turns out there are many lambdas that solve this uh, 
uh, solve this equation and, and we, you have to take many cases and sub cases uh, in, uh, to decide which what is the optimal value of lambda in each case. So, the important thing is uh, uh, that, that you find is that he can he finds that if uh, if k square is is small enough. So, for instance, if k square is less than 1 by 4, then he finds what the optimal lambdas are. He, he, he finds that the optimal uh, the optimal lambdas turn out to be uh, he finds what the optimal lambdas are and from there he finds what the optimal optimal affine cost is. So, this here is the uh, j if I if I denote j star a to be the minimum of over lambda comma mu of j of lambda mu which in turn is the same as minimum of over lambda of j of lambda comma mu of mu of lambda that is denoted j star a this it turns out he shows that this is equal to some 1 minus k square. So, the optimal affine cost turns out to be some uh, 1 minus k square for k square less than uh, less than 1 fourth. Now, the here is so what is uh, uh, so 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 this is so if k square is less than 1 fourth then the optimal affine cost is 1 minus k square. Now, what this means is that if in particular if I take if k is taken close to 0 right if I make k smaller and smaller then my uh, my j, j star a approaches 1 right. So, as, as k tends closer and closer to 0 j star a approaches 1. So, it is in general less than 1, but it eventually you know as k becomes smaller it goes uh, larger and larger and approaches eventually approaches 1 right. So, in the limit. Now, this is so we are not actually taking the limit, but this is if I, an indicative uh, trend that we see that uh, that uh, when k is small the optimal cost is something like 1 minus k square and as k uh, ten eventually tends to 0 it becomes closer and closer to 1. So, if you so now let us come back to the counter example aspect of the Witzenhausen problem that now if you wanted uh, Witzenhausen basically wanted to make the point that linear controllers need not be optimal and what he is now found is a regime which is uh, where k where k is small. So, k square less than 1 fourth in that regime he has computed the optimal cost that he can get from linear controllers right. So, this here is the optimal cost for from linear controllers, but it is applicable only in that particular regime is ap it is applicable when k square is less than 1 fourth. So, now what do we uh, what do we get from this well what we find now is that uh, what we can now do is since we know what the optimal cost is in a particular in uh, at least in a certain regime what we can uh, try to do and which is what Witzenhausen does is he, he tries to see if there is a way by which this cost can be beaten. Can you get a better cost by in uh, in this uh, than than 1 minus k square in this particular regime right. So, so what he he does is then he, he does something that uh, nobody had ever seen before he constructs a very very strange looking uh, nonlinear a nonlinear control policy and using and in that nonlinear control policy he computes a bound for that nonlinear control policy uh, uh, an upper bound on it to sh uh, and, and eventually sh uh, shows that that upper bound uh, is does not exceed a certain value that uh, a certain value which is between 0 and 1 it is actually uh, that bound you can say is 0 0.5 he shows that it cannot uh, he, that the cost the, uh, the cost due to this policy is no greater than 0 0.5 and the cost uh, whereas uh, whereas as k is going to uh, k is going to 0 in a, in 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 the affine policy the best cost in the affine policy is actually close to 1. So, this is this is basically his uh, he, uh, what he const uh, what he shows. So, let us let us just see what his affine what his nonlinear policy actually is ok. So, let us look at a nonlinear policy. So, this is now a nonlinear policy. So, 
as I said this is a completely novel looking policy nobody had ever seen anything like this before used in you know in, in LQG problems. It takes f x to be sigma times sigma remember is the variance of x it is sigma times signum of x or sin of x. So, what is signum of x? Signum of x is simply doing the what is called this two point quantization. So, if x is greater than equal to 0 it, it, it gives you a value 1 if x is less than 0 it gives you a value 0. The, the, uh, the, uh, the function g is taken to be sigma times tan hyperbolic of sigma times y. All right. So obviously, this is this is completely uh, completely uh, uh, new. No, you know, we've never encountered any policy that looks like this in an LQG problem. The best we've seen is linear. Whereas this now uh, is a, you can see there is a terrible nonlinearity in f. In fact, f is not uh, f isn't even continuous. Uh, uh, the the g is 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 the strange tan hyperbolic function. Uh, which again uh, you know is very difficult to see where it comes from. But nonetheless what he what he shows that is is the following that if 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 you take k square sigma square to be equal to 1 then under this particular policy the f j of f comma g evaluates uh, to be less than equal to 2 something like the following something like this 2 times 1 minus square root of 2 by pi plus square root of 2 pi times 1 by k square phi of 1 by k where what is phi? Phi is simply the Gaussian PDF phi of t is 1 by square root of 2 pi e to the minus minus t square by 2. So, it is the standard Gaussian PDF right with mean 0 and, uh, and variance 1. So, this is what he finds if k square sigma square is equal to 1. So, if k square is uh, ch chosen in such a way that k and sigma are chosen in such a way that k square sigma square is equal to 1 uh, then j of f comma g can be upper bounded by this quantity. Now, now let us see what happens as, as you let k, uh, k go to 0. So, as k goes to 0, so as k goes to 0 this this 1 by k square times the Gaussian PDF this quantity also goes to 0. The reason for this is the Gaussian PDF ex decays exponentially in fact more than faster than exponentially right. So, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the Gaussian PDF decays exponentially outside you have only a uh, uh, you have a, a polynomial. So, the numerator here is going to 0 uh, uh, faster than the denominator as a result of this 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 uh, this product here 1 by k square times phi of 1 by k also goes to 0. So, which means as k becomes uh, smaller and smaller uh, the so which means that as as k approaches 0 or, or, uh, or k becomes small enough or rather as k is small enough we have j of f comma g and of course k square and we need k square sigma square to be equal to 1. So, we have j of f comma g to be less is less than equal to 2 my becomes. So, the second term becomes uh, uh, as good as vanishes so you can say it becomes less than equal to 2 times 1 plus or, or sorry 1 minus 2 by square root of 2 by pi. And now this this particular quantity evaluates to 0 0.404 and whatever uh, even even if i if i take k to be um, uh, k to be uh, not zero but uh, but close to zero what we can say is for, for k small enough this is definitely less than equal to 0 0.5 whereas whereas if you remember i just said that the optimal affine cost was approaching 1 so, what does this mean? What this is shown is therefore, that you we have found a policy, we have found a policy for which the optimal cost is 
uh, for uh, we, we found a policy, we found a policy which is nonlinear and whose performance is is strictly better than the the than the performance of the optimal linear policy, right? So our nonlinear policy. Uh, policy gives a cost strictly less than the best linear policy. So, for in other words, for k small enough, because for k small enough. J of f comma g is strictly less than j star a, which means that there exists, and uh, which means that which what does this has what has this taught us that linear policies are not optimal. Okay, so which means that linear policies are not optimal. this is therefore the counter example this is why this is a counter why it's a counter example in stochastic control so we have considered so what witzenhausen has basically shown is that you've taken a linear system quadratic cost uh, linear observations gaussian noise and and yet Yet you have been able to you have it is it's happened that there is a, a nonlinear a nonlinear policy that outperforms the best linear policy, and the reason this has happened is because there is uh, because he has departed from the earlier assumption, which is the assumption of classical information structure, and gone to a non-classical information structure. So, in other words, the, the all the earlier results that we had about linear quadratic Gaussian problems where the optimal controller was linear, it has it is a superposition of the deterministic controller and the Kalman filter uh, for, uh, for, for a state estimation. All of this is true only when you have the classical information structure. It is not uh, once you move to a non-classical information structure, it need not be true. In uh, non-classical information structure problems may have may admit non-linear optimal policies. The, the other see the other the other thing that uh, lesson important lesson which I have been talking about uh, so uh, throughout is the issue of the dual effect and how the dual effect makes it very hard for us to compute what the optimal controller is. So, the, uh, the, the policy that that uh, that uh, that Witzenhausen showed this 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 strange policy here this this strange policy is by no means guaranteed to be optimal there may very well be improvements on top of this policy that uh, that one can make and you can get even an even lower cost uh, than what uh, than what Schwitzenhausen ha had got so as of today we still do not know uh, this recording is being done in 2022 the february of 2022 as of today we do not we still do not know what the optimal controller is for the for Witzenhausen's problem, it's a simple looking, uh, deceptively simple looking uh, problem. Seems like a toy problem that one could uh, one could solve, but it's it it, it hides in it an em enormous amount of complexity, which you know mankind has been struggling against for more than 50 years now. So this the a simple problem like this has has remained unsolved. We, and that tells us why the the role that the dual effect has uh, in you know in 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 stochastic control problems and how it makes uh, reasoning about those problems or computing solutions about of these problems an extremely complicated task so this uh, this therefore is the state of the art we we know that linear controllers are not optimal that has been shown we don't know we know that nonlinear the optimal one has to be found in the class of nonlinear controllers we do not yet know if uh, what the form of the optimal nonlinear controller actually is